Well, well, well. Hello, everyone. Another episode of Crashing In. And today we have special guests, the VCR. And we're going to be promoting their latest single in Wonderland and more. We're going to be talking about what's been going on during lockdown, etc., etc. It's just... So, yeah, it's nice to have guests back on. And I hope you all enjoyed the last episode. Um, like I think I called it Spinning Tunes and with a cup of tea. I don't know why I called it that, but we had some cracking tracks on there. Um, currently, it's the night of the release date of that episode, so I don't know how it's done yet. So, yeah, but if you haven't watched it already, um, please go back to it and check it out it's really good it is a long podcast as well it is going on for about an hour 30 but it's not much of me talking it's mainly music really so like and it's and when i'm talking i am talking about some interesting stuff i am i have got a boring voice but i understand why you might not want to hear it but it's all right I, i think you should check it out got some good tunes like um joy division novelty the unreleased version and um Cherry Pickle's latest single, Good Girls, Bad Seeds, The Sand King's Temple Redneck, much, much more. Loads of cracking tracks. And I'm not going to say anything, but a, there's a track on there, the first opening track of the podcast. And it's a guess. You have to guess who wrote the song, who played the song. So I'm interested to see the answers for that. I'm really interested. Um, well, I, I've just got some news. Um... The thieves, before I start, but the thieves have um, got a gig coming up in October, and um, it's a social distancing gig in um, Stockton on Stockton on Tees. Um, I forgot what the venue is, but I posted it on my Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, if you want to check it out, go go on their page on Facebook or um, or Twitter or Instagram. The link for the tickets are in the bio. So yeah, like and if and it's nice because we get all the gigs back. Um at the moment, West Midlands wise, um there's um I think in October, the Jack Fletcher band are playing a gig. I don't know if you have to pre book tickets or anything like that, because usually Dead Wax is one of those walk in type places. But just in case, have a check. But yeah, that's a coming up gig, and that's all I know, like gig wise, and um, that's coming up. But um, I am um, just about to edit the podcast now with the VCR, so I don't actually know what they said yet. So, but I don't know. I don't know if I asked them about future events, gigs, or anything like that. But you will hear later on in the podcast. Um, any news? I can't think of any news I might want to tell you before I start. Um, I don't know, like, um, well, I, I don't know, I don't know if I've got any news. I don't know if I've got any news, because, like, it's just the day after finishing editing the other podcast, so... I think most of the things I wanted to say would be on the um you know on the last podcast. But I just want to say a future guest um that I've been talking about for a while. Like obviously we've been waiting on and uh, like this epi- this episode for a while now, like but now it's finally here, which is great. And um We've got another one I've been waiting about for um a, a lad called Jack um Jack Card I think oh shit I hope I haven't pronounced his name wrong fuck's sake but um that'd be embarrassing but he just got back to me um to um the other day say saying he's still up for the podcast and that so hopefully that's the future guest I just got in contact today with um. The Weenji Brothers, um, other future guests I want to try and get on. They did confirm they'll do a podcast, but I was just double-checking with them. So, hope, fingers crossed they'll be on. 
that's all I want to say before we start. And now I'm going to hand it over to the VCR and I'm going to play some brilliant tunes by them. We've got a bit um, of a live recordings they sent over to me. So, yes, stay tuned and I'll talk to you in a bit. So, um, how have you been um, coping through lockdown? So we've yeah. been alright, haven't we? We've just been writing tunes from home. Yeah, man. Meeting up when we can. Oh, does he mean lockdown as in the two weeks where we couldn't meet up? <laughs> <laughs> no, lockdown. <laughs> no, that's not what lockdown is. Does he mean like, I think, the, like the period of like, everything I think just the being entirety a bit shit. of lockdown. Right. Everything being shit for the last yeah, many yeah. months. Basically just hanging out in lockdown as a group, as a big group. <laughs> as a massive group without masks. <laughs> Coughing in each other's faces. Yeah, man. It's yeah, been, just it's been wild. It's been bliss. <laughs> it's been bliss. Now we've just sort of like got on with it. Really, we've been writing more tunes. Obviously, we haven't had any gigs, which has been sad. But we've just yeah. been getting on with things and no. just doing stuff. We've written more tunes than usual, and we've kind of like nailed a few new tunes. And, yeah, man. And we managed to do some recording. Yeah. With yeah, we've, uh, Gav. We've got a couple of recordings. Cool. I mean, I can't remember when lockdown actually officially finished. Although it might have restarted again now, but maybe it's never finished. It's never going to end. Oh, isn't it started again as well? I think it just means we 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 have to write more tunes and be more great. Mm -hmm. When the guy asked us the questions, it was the, the, there wasn't another lockdown, but we're actually in one again, aren't yeah, we now? Secondary yeah. lockdown, local lockers. There we go. So yeah, we've just been sort of getting on with it, and I've been being the same really, yeah. Yeah. getting pissed more every Beer, night. Beers and tunes and crying. So, um, have you written how um, many? songs over that time period and I know you answered that already but um, I'm basically just reading the script here <laughs> well wow. yeah we just answered that haven't we yeah yeah thank god <laughs> I'm joking yeah we've we've written we've com written and completed at least three tunes we've written and completed three and then we've got about another six soon to be bangers on the back burner yeah man warming up nicely on the back burner that's already hot it's roasting and there's a couple of tunes in particular that are going to be really fiery, I reckon. Um, yeah, man. This, yeah, we've got a few irons in the fire. Have you got any upcoming plans when all this pandemic bollocks blows over? Where's the lady? Um, just sort of gigs. loads of gigs, yeah. Just filthy gigs. The sweatiest gigs we can find and gigs ruin. And, I think gigs and fun. I reckon fun's the main one for me. Fun and gigs. or oh, fun at gigs. Fun at gigs, fun between gigs, and gigs. Yeah, fun after gigs. Gigs between <laughs> fun. <laughs> and fun. Mm? Yeah, that's it, man. Gigs and fun. Gigs fun and just releasing more of our tunes. We've just been going on about. Woo! So I should have said this at the start, but basically, before we talk a bit more further about the band and that, um, can you all just say your name and for the listeners that don't know and what you play in the band? No. So I'm Ian, and I sing, I play my voice box in the band, and I play some guitar. I play the easier bits of guitar that allow me to sing and play guitar at the same time. But still intricate and spicy at the same time. I, I play, I, I put a light level of spice in there. I spice it up as much as I'm capable of, but I'm not capable of, I'm not capable of much these days. <laughs> um, I'm Matt, and I play the bass guitar. And some sweet backing vocals and one day. Occasional backing vocals when I <coughs> pucker up the courage. Do you pucker up courage? I think you pucker up your yeah. lips. I pucker up my lips and the courage is going to flow out real soon. Yeah, yeah, man. You're <laughs> oh, God, man. Your courage is flowing again. Yeah, it's horrible. It stinks. Um, but, yeah, man, that's that's me. And then we've got Joe, who isn't here, who plays the guitar as well and also backing vocals at some point. He plays beautiful guitar. I play... Me mediocre guitar. He plays some really, really lovely guitar, man. It's beautiful. I was watching, effortless. I was watching him play the other day, and 
Yeah. Effortless is the word. A guitar? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's I was very, on the swings. It's, <laughs> I was watching him play on the swings for a bit as well. It was really creepy, but, you know, he didn't know I was there. and oh, I didn't really know I was there. I was that fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Joshua Kirby is the drummer. <laughs> yeah. Joshua Kirby is the man who plays drums, and he plays those really well. He does, man. We just meant to just say how good we all are. I we're think it's all, just an opportunity. We're both wicked as well. Yeah, we're all we're wicked. both really great. Oh, oh yeah, yes, mate. Cool, cool. Oh, let's talk about how your interest in music started. Um, so, uh, how did you all get into it? Like, what, what was your, how did you all get into music? For me, it was I was sort of like a ragamuffin, like chav, but not really. It was a bit of a wet chav, bowling around in rock ports and tracksuit bottoms. Then I saw the band play. I saw. A, a very old formation of the band with Joe in it playing at school when I was 13 and then I went home and went to my brother who's here as well uh, say hello, hello Mike hello yeah. guys hi so yeah we said to him oh I want to be in a band man because Matt and my bro were in a band together called yeah, Encrypted um, and yeah I just told him that I wanted to sing in a band and either his mum or his sister me and Joe can't remember but between us we both think different things Phoned him, phoned my brother that night, and was like, "Do you know anyone who'd want to sing in a band?" And the rest is history. <laughs> and that was it, really. I just turned up at practice in my rock ports and instantly went and bought new clothes. So I felt like a loser. Got to do it, man. When you, as soon as you get into some delicious tunes, you got to buy some new delicious clothes. Yeah. So that was me, sort of giving a shit about music. Really, then I started to listen to other tunes I hadn't listened to before, stealing my brother's CDs, and then. Um, yeah. I, I had a bit of that actually. actually. I used to steal my brother's CDs and listen to his like Metallica and Megadeth and Anthrax CDs that he bought one summer because he was like, I'm now going to be a guy who's into metal. Um, and, and I listened to that a lot and then started playing guitar because of it. You were um, a shred monkey, weren't you? Yeah, man, I was shredding. I, yeah, I was a shredder. Uh, I was the shredder. Wow. And, yeah, in fact. The yeah. official. Yeah, the shredder, the guy. Wow. That was me. And um, yeah, me and Mike, uh, your bro. Me. Hi. Started a band and just got shredding, and it was great. That yeah. was it, man. Joe first got into music when his dance instructor played him uh, an ABBA Greatest Hits, and he never looked back. <laughs> it's classic Joe, man. Classic Joe move. And think, Josh still hates music. Yeah, I think Josh is, is still it's just a, embroils. Embroils? He embroil, he embroids. I, I might be thinking of the, might be thinking embroils means something else, but Josh just embroils music. <laughs> embroils it, man. <laughs> Josh is always embroiling music. No, yeah, that's us, really. We're just a, yeah, that's it. Also, as well, the first time I remember really caring about music was we were <laughs> my brother put on a tape of the Beatles when we drove him around to drop him at his mate's house, and it stayed in the car. And Rocky Raccoon came on by the Beatles. What a tune, man. We used to play yeah, that. Play. Yeah, we did, man. We, we did a version of Rocky yeah. In fact, I remember going around your house and like being in your dad's like, office thing and playing Beatles tunes and like speeding them up and being like, wow, technology is so yeah. cool. I'm like the voice recorder on like, Windows 95 or whatever. Yeah, man. Rocky Raccoon. I think we did. We said Rocky Raccoon went back to his room because he didn't have a Johnny. <laughs> because he didn't have a Johnny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, that was, he could have got a blowjob, maybe, at least. I thought that... Uh, the Beatles sort of did like head wobbling pop pop nuggets until that point. I didn't realise they had like a bit of a cooler back catalogue. Yeah. So yeah, that was I don't know how old I was then, but that was sort of when I was like, oh, music can be really cool. So what was all your first? So all of you like each like, what was your your favourite band? First ever favourite band or musician? The band. For me, it was like when I joined the Joe Ivory group. It was like Blink One Eight Two, like that kind of like pop punk punk rock vibe I, I think I was quite late to the Blink-182 scene because I only got into them like a bit later in life like I got into Blink-182 during their like self-titled album or whatever the best one if, can, I, can I just hop in here guys yeah this is, hop uh, in man. Like, slide in slide into the slide um, into the chat I was thinking today actually that um, one of the bands that Ian got into um, very early on and that I was listening to them don't today don't tell them I listened to him today and I thought actually a lot of that has a lot to answer for for Ian's sort of writing style actually. Sort of heavy stuff but with quite sort of sweet lyrics was him with Bill uh, Velo, whatever. I remember you you were pretty his obsessed. Infernal yeah, 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 his, his infernal majesty. Yeah, yeah, man. Infernal majesty, apparently, yeah. I was listening to him today and I thought, shit, I remember you used to 
you were like obsessed with the, like their albums. Yeah, yeah I, thought, I was pretty massively obsessed with him, actually. Yeah, I like, I, you know, I thought a lot of that has still C- kind of stayed. Him with and you. CKY, and that was that the same. Yeah, yeah. CKY kind oh, yeah, of vibe. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's basically all Jackass inspired. Yeah, yeah we got yeah. some on, on the way. Cheers. Nice one. Um, yeah, yeah. So, what about you, Matt? What, what was your first band or musician you gave a shit about? Uh, probably <laughs> make it someone cool, Michael I, Jackson. I can interject again <laughs> when I was very young. Oh, Mike, Mike, Mike. Thank God, Mike. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah. well, another guy that I was listening to, and I thought, fuck, the, Matt, Matt, like you know, this was like Matt's sort of roots for his. Oh, nice one, dude. I apologise about the heads on the Amstel. They always go shit. Uh, that's cool, man. Dude, man, that's all good. More Cheers. beer for the supping. Ooh. Cheers, man. Cheers, dude. Was it lemonade or coke? You wanted to put the lemon spot on, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Okay. Okay. Nice one, dude. Thank you. Let me get the oh, um, ca- a card, please, mate. Sorry, we're just we're getting beers. We're in a pub. We're getting beers. I've oh, got to uh, be old school. <laughs> Should I pause this? Oh yeah, probably should pause it. So. So yeah, I, uh, one thing I, I remember, uh, especially Matt, Matt, kind of when I first met him, what well, he was very big on, and I think had a big influence on him as well, was Stevie Ray Vaughan, the late great ah, Stevie yeah. Ray Vaughan, um, and like Matt was quite well, into like it's flooding down in Texas. <laughs> That's the boy. That guy. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah, man. Stevie and uh, Ray you used to go to like a jam group, didn't you, with your dad? Like yeah, where it was yeah. just play yeah, 12 bar blues and everyone just fucking had like a little session where they'd have like two rounds of the 12 well, bars sit around in a circle yeah, like yeah, jamming yeah, turned up to this thing and I it was, it was like beginner guitar beginner guitar players and my dad wanted to go and I went with him and I was like probably a little bit more advanced maybe at that point so all the beginners Dude, people remember, used to um, did you play like, play, play uh, like uh, 12 bar uh, blues chords or whatever like these and A's and B's and I used to like that's lick cool, over it and be like that's, that's, that's wicked, wicked man that's, that's rad I should have brought them down just no sinking fat solo into a blues Pitch scenario man. so yeah good chat you man now I'm gonna play a song um, the, one of the live songs um, the VCRs have sent me to play on the podcast and this song is called Tell Me Tell Me Tell me, tell me, tell me when you were falling Did you ever think about where you would land? The TV's on and all your friends got caught The day is slowly melting through your hands Oh, won't you please stop telling
Jamie Talme by the VCR. And I think Ian told me that we are the first to listen to these live recordings. So, um, yeah, so crashing in podcast is actually quite cool. <laughs> so, yeah, let's move on to the next question now. And I'll be playing the next track in a few minutes later on so when did you first pick up an instrument and start writing your own tunes so good well i first picked up uh, i first played guitar around that old man's house well, my think, mom used to drop me out i think you played trumpet before you played guitar and if i'm going to be totally <laughs> oh, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, poking my fucking nose in <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, so i believe you play you're a brass instrumentalist originally yeah, originally i was a trumpet <laughs> i believe i was grade four but i might have lied to helen all my life and told her i was grade eight and she's here so <laughs> or maybe grade six i think i went grade six it's grade, grade, too grade six just a little bit before it gets real serious like grade yeah, six yeah, yeah. Grade you're still like you're a bit of a you're a bit shit on trumpet still basically you, you perfectly you timed it so that when i got to like my teenage years where i wanted to just lie in bed i didn't have to listen to you but honking on a fucking <laughs> brass trumpet in my ears yeah, that's so you could just sit and slowly strum yourself crazy and then play a bit of guitar <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so then, and then guitar wise i probably learned like to be asked to play guitar when i joined the band i guess sort of me and joe sat in his loft room just like doing like remember those like old ass books with tab in them yeah, where they were like official and you knew it was all actually correct cherry cherry reds guitar manuals. cherry manuals cherry yeah, reds the filthy manuals who's the them off man trying Any to learn man. metallica solos i just learned like really simple blink 182 riffs yeah that was pretty much me and then yeah so we did that when we were like 13 and now we're older than your mother and younger than I'd like to say. <laughs> yeah, sorry, so no, so that was ages ago, back to 20 years ago. <laughs> no. So yeah, so it was all that sort of like, what about you, Matt? When did you pick up a Gleet? I picked up a Gleet when I was about 12 years old. But I don't think I started writing tunes until I was probably about 15 or 16 or something because <laughs> I was just a bit, uh, just couldn't really be asked. I just wanted to basically be Kirk Hammett for years. Wow. Like, that was my jam. Well, I wrote he's some a sexy tunes. man. He is a sexy man. Or do you want to be like him on guitar? No, I wanted to be like him looks-wise, build-wise. Uh, I don't know about looks, wise. man. No, I wanted him, man. I wanted the lot. Really? Yeah, he's yeah. A bit of a... beautiful curly locks. No, I think it was just ability. Although it's interesting now when I, when I watch, him, watch him play and I'm like, oh, he's just... I was really, really, really great. And he still was pretty great, but he's also really, really, really turd. Weirdly, I did that with a him interview. <laughs> when I was like, when I was into him, I could never like see what they were like as people. I just thought they were like a bit weird and cool. And then probably about three years ago, I watched an interview with them and they were just all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Proper yeah. like, I was like, oh God, it made me, it made me hate myself for liking him even more. I'm sure we've all had this moment, but have you ever, um, do you remember the first time that you, you saw what Guy Garvey looked like from Elbow? And oh, your dreams were smashed because you were like, I thought he was like a sexy young muscle head and then he's a big fat ginger man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a way though, because their tunes are good enough to keep you hooked anyway, it kind of had its own charm that he was a fat... Yeah, absolutely. Fat agreed 100%. Fudge, fudge it, adds, it adds so much yeah, more music. Man. Like um, when you realise it's Simon Fowler of Ocean Colour Scene, he's actually a homosexual and all of his music was actually about guys. Yeah, when you When you get that, you're like, fuck. How much more beauty does that add? Yeah, yeah. It was a, you know... Adds a new spice bit, twist. Uh, it adds a twist that you hadn't seen was there all along. Yeah. A whole new depth of lyric. Insight. Awesome. Now talking a bit more about the band, um, how did you come up with the name, the VCR? Ian? Well, basically, when we had a lock-up ages ago at Mother's Studio, I was obsessed with the Warriors, and we were like, we've got to come up with a band name, guys, come on. And I just went, it'd be really cool to... Um, name ourselves after one of the gangs in the Warriors and I literally just got a list of gang names from the Warriors and just went through them all and we were very nearly called the Hi-Hats. Which one's the most awkward to say and spell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we just picked the one that was the hardest to say and spell, which was the Van Cortland Rangers, the, the Van Cortland t Rangers with a silent T. The Hi-Hats would have been way easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it just sounded a bit more like, it sounded a bit more like you were named after the, the symbol as opposed to like yeah, that's true. a cool gang from the Warriors. And the Hi Hats as a gang were really weird. They had a leader called, uh, what was his name? You could have had the name as, as, a, as a symbol, just to be extra cryptic. Yeah, yeah, maybe. The symbol of a symbol. They were like all dressed like clowns, and the leader's name was Chatterbox, and he was like a big. Sounds fat like clown your band, mobber, then. 
You know the. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the best name ever. You know that, like John Wayne Gacy, murderer man, fat, fat murderer dressed like a clown. Yeah, he used to be. Found like 40, 40 little boys chopped up in his loft. Have they got? Is, is, is the band Marilyn Manson got, uh, one of their instrument players? Probably. They've, they've got all the big ones, all the hits, man. They got. They've got, they've got someone, man. In fact, I think that's the one that breaks the rule because. Isn't he just called JW Gacy? Was it? So he, he's got the guy's name because it's meant to be um, a serial killer and like a pinup model, isn't it? Oh, nice. Hence Maybe there's a pinup model called JW. But also JW's John Wayne Gacy. Oh no, yeah, that's what you mean. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Sorry, J Dubs. Definitely over over uh, interjecting now. I'll, uh, I'll <laughs> tuck my dick back into my pants. I'll tuck my chain in, guys. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so it was after it was after a gang in the film The Warriors, the Van Cortland Rangers, and then. We kind of had a bit of a hiatus, didn't we, when Joe went off travelling and we just got old and losery yeah. and ill. And then we decided to like re-hit the ground running but sort of refresh everything, so we shortened the name that was a bit stupidly long and hard to spell to the VCR, which everyone thinks means video cassette recorder, but does not Does not uh, cool. To be honest, one of my all-time favourite films is um, The Warriors, class film, and... Just want to say, if no one's watched Warriors, you got to watch it. Like you can, I'm sure you can find it on Netflix or something. Now TV, I think it is on Now TV. So if you're just curious what they're talking about, go check that film out. It's a class film, and it's just non-stop fighting. So like, I'm sure you'd love it. But onwards to the next question now. Um, so lots has been happening over the past year, like you released singles such as Castaway and Love Song, and now the um, recently you released your debut album featuring those songs, um, and I was just wondering what was it like um, recording your debut album and what was the response like to the release? Well, I think it was, it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> a good response, I think. Everyone seems to love it who've heard it. If anyone could be asked to hear it, well, no one heard it. But those, the few who who happened upon it yeah. in the in a, the dark, cold depths of Spotify loved it, man. It was went down really well. Yeah, yeah. And we kind of like off the back of that, I guess we were kind of starting to build a bit of momentum at the start of the year and getting like we've got loads of gigs. Like we've probably got like five gigs lined up for about the first three months of the year. We did two of those. Then we got another few lined up. So it was like looking good. And then lockdown happened and. It all got like cancelled and pushed back so many times. That I don't really know what's going on anymore. Yeah, it was a shame. There's a, a lot of good gigs, out. although they've all been, like you say, pushed back. But then who, who knows? Man? They're pushed back, but so many fucking times that I lose track of which was which because they're all at the Sun Power Lounge. So I just like all I know is that we turn up at the Sun Power Lounge on a certain day yeah, and go. Mm. I think we've still got one up for November, but I don't know if that's gonna go down. November fourteenth is our next one, but who knows? I oh, know I've already asked him. He said it's not going to happen. Oh, so he just remembered, and he went. Where well, we are looking to do socially distanced gigs, but not at the Sunflower because that wouldn't happen. Mm. Right, well, in it. There you go. Did you have a few gigs after the release? And if you have, um, where and when was the gigs? There yeah, were well, mint gigs. We did two, didn't we? We had was it Hare and Hounds and probably Sunflower Lounge. Oh, yeah, okay. uh, yeah, Sunflower Lounge definitely. In fact, wasn't Sunflower Lounge like the love song release or something? I know, because that would have been after, that after. After that would have been pre-release of the album, though, wouldn't it? Oh, right. We definitely had two gigs in January, and then we had like five gigs one a month after that, and they all failed. So they went mint. I remember they were just wicked. The hair and hair. Oh, we had O2 maybe. Sunflower Lounge oh, was, Club. was yeah. almost, but well, just under a year ago, because it was when I came back from London. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah so it was about August the tenth or something around there. Oh, okay, so yeah, so we did two gigs somewhere, and they were, they went really well, man. They were really cool. Yeah, I think Hare and Hounds was the main one, wasn't it? That went down really well. Playing with, playing with Mondo Royale, those two chicks rocking punk, and that guy on drums. You did a couple of gigs in uh, London, though, in uh, Deptford, didn't you? And uh... yeah, but that was this, this is specifically after the release of the album. Mm. We did do the Deptford gig in London, in London, but that was many moons prior. Let's do a London gig. Good gig. Yeah, they're all mint, man. I know the um, albums and singles are on Spotify, but I'm just curious if you can get physical copies like a vinyl or CD. 
on your singles or the album. No, you can't. But we're, we're going to get them, aren't we? That's like a plan. Yeah, yeah. As of like, we're probably going to give them away at gigs, I reckon. I reckon. As opposed to like trying to sell them and shit. Get some CDs, I reckon. Get some T-shirts done. Get a bit of merch on the go. Just give it out. Or if people want to pay, they can. Mm. Otherwise, just... Yeah, just sort of get a load of shit made and CDs mm. and throw them out. <laughs> throw them at people at gigs when they're not paying I attention. I want a VCR T-shirt. I feel like... Yeah, I want one, man. I want one to clean the... Sides with yeah, man, you gotta clean the sides. <laughs> gotta clean the sides. Always clean the sides. <laughs> 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 mother always told me. There we go. Right, people. This question was sent quite a while back now, like so. It's a bit out of date, and I don't know when they record this. So, yes. Um, now you got an upcoming single called Wonderland, due on the first to release on the. Did they? Sorry, I. I'm stop that again. Um, you have a song due to release called Wonderland on the 21st. And also, just um, just want to say, I forgot what the month was because I don't know what month when I sent this question. Um, but I really absolutely love the track. It's really good. And um, are you excited about release and that? And um, what was it like recording during lockdown or after lockdown or Whenever you've done it. So, yeah, yeah, it was really cool, man. So, we went to record this song with Gavin Monaghan, didn't we, at Magic Garden in yeah. Wolverhampton, which was really cool. Just yeah. like a different approach. We've been recording with Dave at Mother's for years now, and it's like, it's really cool, but I think as part of the like revamp, changing the name and all that kind of shit, it was probably good for us to yeah. sort of. Kind of like catapulted us a bit into the next level because the, the, tune, the tunes that we've recorded, or Wonderland specifically, sound so glossy and mint. And yeah, man, yeah, man. It's a really nice experience. And I think the recording process as well is probably a bit more disciplined. Mm. We just go to Dave's and just get hammered all day and like sort of go, Can you put another synth on and get carried away? Whereas <laughs> Dave doesn't drink. Does he? That's strange. I don't know. Does, I think he might drink. Yeah. Session Ed. Oh, yeah, he might be a bit of a session. <laughs> I don't, when, we, when, when he was recording though, he was, he was on yeah. it, man. He was. Coffees. Mm. Yeah, he wouldn't be. Yeah, he'd just have like a cup of tea and a sandwich. Mm. He was always on it, man. I'll be what we should have done, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly what we should have done. Remember that once when you turned up with... I'd already bought us like bottles from the bar and then you turned up with eight Carlsberg Export and we didn't do any recording or anything. We just sat there getting hammered behind him. <laughs> falling, lying on the floor and shit. Yeah, he got a bit messy. horrible. Yeah, it was, got a me it was a messy one. But Dave cracked on and yeah, at the end of it all he managed to pull an album out the bag. Well, yeah, but... Um, yeah, it's really cool. Looking forward to getting stuff on Spotify. Uh, we've got a new tune coming out on the 30th of October. Just got close to free. Just recorded at Magic Garden as well, and that's Sounds a popping, a popping beat. It's a, it's a nugget. It's a glossy, poppy nug of joy. Someone said it's a real buff. It's a real buff. It's a buffer. I like it. I like a good buffer. Mm. If I can get a buff, my hands on a buffer, I'm, I will. So yeah, that was that. Yeah, it's wicked, man. It's great stuff, and we're looking forward to doing that. We've got a music video planned as well for this one, so yeah, you yeah. get to see our beautiful faces. Mm. Miming the song trying, to you. Yeah. Trying to look as sexy as possible, I reckon. Yeah, man, we'll do it. We'll we'll do our best. We'll try our hardest, and we won't quite get there, but we'll try. I played the song um, Wonderland already on the podcast, um, the last podcast. So I think, as they went on the subject of their new track, um, new upcoming single, this is going to be the first. Well, whoever's listening to this podcast, you're going to be the first to listen to this song before it's released it's, um, apparently it's quite a while till it's released but yeah and I'm just going to say my thoughts on the song and that yeah I'm quite excited to play this now and I haven't played I haven't played it to myself yet so you're going to get my genuine reaction to the song now and it's I'm sure it's going to be a good one because like obviously the VCR have released so many good tracks so here's close to free by the VCR.
VCR, I just want to say I absolutely loved it. Um, it's it, like you never seem to fail to impress. Like you always release a good tune, and um, no, it's, I don't say the word good, a brilliant tune, and it's it's just like music just get better and better, and. Um, what I loved so much about this tune is like how like there's so many different sections of the song, the changes, and that, and um, it just seems very uh, out there and like it had some mellow parts and it goes into proper rock and roll heaviest parts and it's just really enjoyed listening to that track first time listening. Um, it's just like I never. I have a bad word to say about their songs because they always, always release brilliant tunes. Obviously, they've just got a good ear. And, um, yeah, I can't wait for the... Well, we heard it already, but when the release, I'm sure there's loads of people are going to love this tune. And um, I'm sure it's going to... Like, they're going to get so many streams and that. Depend if you're doing on Spotify or, or CD, whatever. And, um, yeah, and I'm excited for the music video now. Um, so that's going to be interesting, seeing a music video. I, I think you only done a few music videos in the past. So, yeah, I'm really excited for that. So everyone stay tuned for the music video and the release of the track Close to Free and save it on your Spotify. So now... Can we start get talking about gigs and all that? Um, like, when can you recall like your first ever gig, and when and if you can, when and where was it? Also, can you recall how nervous you were as it was your first ever gig? Who answers to that? I guess because when uh, in this like with Joe and me and whatnot, it, our first gig was. Um, a first like proper gig other than just like school gigs. We did like a festival in Warsaw, which was pretty cool. Um, that was really mint. We kind of like won a competition to, to do that. And then since we kind of like joined as the Van Cortland Rangers or whatever, our first gig was at the Hare and Hounds, supporting a band called We Were Promised Jetpacks. I think I went to that. Got a when you booked to play with um, Augustines as well. Yeah, yeah, we are Augustines. And then they, they fucked us over because their label wanted like... They basically the gig sold out, so then they they wanted a one of their like other bands to be represented, so like they booted us off the bill. Sucks, man. Motherfuckers. Then I went to see them at the Brixton Academy. And then I went to see them, and I hope they were shit. Were they shit? <laughs> yeah, they were really. They were, they were just boring. They've got really boring songs, man. Yeah, they're really boring. Impression. They just happen to have a really good-looking lead singer. I reckon he carries yeah. their their weight a fair bit. So well, you guys have got a problem, and, uh, problem for us. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> why, why we're doing so shit. How about you, Matt? What was your first gig? On? The first gig, I think, with you guys was, um, it was probably um, either at the Actress and Bishop, or it would have been when we went to that like 
Herb in the sun. Oh, yeah, mic. the gate in. Yeah, the gate, the full, like, full the band, gate in. The full band open mic thing. We played a few tunes. Yeah. It was really good. Did you pop anything in the gate in? Or? Yeah, yeah, I popped anything, I popped, <laughs> popped anything in the gate, in the gate in. <laughs> yeah, man, I popped so much in the gate in. I don't want to... <laughs> we buried the gate in pretty deep, wasn't it? Yeah, the gate in was, was a great place. What about you, Mike? Where was your first gig? My first gig um, was in the, uh, in, um, the drama studio at school. Um, with Matt here and uh, and uh, yeah. another guy who was um, on bass, uh, what was his name? Darren Smith, oh, yeah, on bass, right, yeah. and um, and Matt Brown on. Was that on so who was Pat, Matt Brown? Fat Clown. Oh, and Chris and Chris, yeah, Chris Black playing drums, and we did um, and we played with our RE teacher, as vanilla as that can sound. Yeah, man, that we played "Rape Me" by Metallic <laughs> uh, by um, Nirvana. Sorry. Um, <laughs> No, live forever by Oasis. Live forever by Oasis, and we were called, at that point we were called the Copper Plated Razors. Wow, that <laughs> it was before our cool cool name change. But yeah, that was uh, that was that was my first. What year would that have been? I think we were in like about two. oh well, well it probably about year two thousand I reckon because yeah. I was probably about fourteen fifteen. Yeah, so there you go, man. And uh, we had a, an audience of about twenty. Um, all sat down and all between else. every song just doing <laughs> this. And we're going. <laughs> woo! That audience. Oh, yeah. a... For school audience. Woo! Take your top off, Moe. <laughs> oh, Go on, son. Take your shoes off. <laughs> Sweet, man. What is it like performing now compared to that first ever gig you done? Well, now we give less of a shit yeah, and it just goes off. It's wild. And obviously, you know, we like play more together and become more in tune with one another so you don't have to like worry about kind of you know, stage presence and all that bullshit. You just kind of play and have a great time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I suppose he's more relaxed. Yeah, way more relaxed. Uh, but also more fiery. Right? <laughs> <laughs> really Nowhere relaxed. Nowhere near relaxed. Not really super relaxing. But also very, 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 very okay. <laughs> it's so I've noticed a change okay. in your stage persona as the band's developed, actually, myself. Uh, last time I saw you, you looked very kind of... Just sort of natural, but like it wasn't like you were trying to... It wasn't like you were trying to look cool or nonchalant or relaxed. It was just like, it looked like a functioning band doing what they meant to do. We were, were trying so hard to look cool. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> we were trying hard to look like we were trying hard to look cool. That's our, that's our vibe we're going for. <laughs> Shit. Shit. Like you failed. You, you, know, you, know, you know, naturally like, cool. <laughs> yeah, and you know, little little nods that you do to one another and you know it's about the music. You know, if someone like misses like an intro, you know those kind of live things, whatever. You just look very slick, man. You know, and I think, nice. and you're not one of those bands that like you don't sort of leap around like gimps trying to be like entertaining, but just your, the way you hold yourself just looks really cool and laid back and just sort of nice man. You know, you're there for the music, and I, I enjoyed it the last time I saw you guys. Busy, nice one. What is it you love most about gigs? The the be- vibes, isn't it? You know, you play some wicked tunes and the. The people there love the tunes, and you sort of bounce off each other, and that yeah, energy get, just builds, I get man. That, man. I get the, I get the building you know, energy from you guys. I, mean, you like, know, I, I like, look, I like yeah. looking over at Joe and seeing him sort of like nod around and just like play some like, tunes. Looking back at Josh and just you know giving it one of them. Looking over at you, and you're giving it a piece of that. Yeah, a bit of one. A one of them. A piece of one of them. Just, <laughs> just a small shot of that, please, sir. Fine. Unless you're talking about the uh, London Grime MC gigs. And what do you think about him? Because he, you know, <laughs> he's great. He's great. I think he's great. It's a brilliant, a brilliant song called "Hell to the Liars," featuring London Grammar and our very own Birmingham bred and born JK. Oh, and, um, JK. I think if you've asked me what Jing I think about Heath, gigs, believe, uh, no, um, uh, Small Heath. That's what I said. Small Heath. Stand up. The smaller of the heat. Uh, JK, large up to JK, man. He's, he's, he's repping just like you guys are Suck in the South girl. Birmingham area. Suck that guy, I'll knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put it out there right now. Yeah, he's a fat fuck, fuck as well. JK. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> fuck JK. So, yeah, that's, that's our official stance on that. What do you really think of the uh, live music <laughs> at the moment? As um, not many gigs are going on due to the pandemic and that. Yeah, man, it's shit not playing gigs. Yeah. Like it's all, it's all well and good recording and writing tunes and all that kind of shit, but like I think gigs seem to sort of feel like a nice sort of seal on what you've done. <laughs> kind of like you know to celebrate. It's the reason you fucking do it, isn't it? Really, that's it, man. And you want to showcase your shit. And you want to go out there and sort of like 
feel the energy and just have a great old time. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a shame. But then, I've, like recently, I keep seeing you know other bands that are posting gigs for like May 21. You're thinking, fuck, man, is it really going to be that long? And it probably is. Yeah, I wonder whether maybe we're like reluctant to book gigs that far in advance because it sort of makes us think that that might actually be how long it's going to be. Yeah. Whereas now I'm in denial, going like, nah, November. To be fair, and then they've like, already cancelled it. We still we still like doing what we do and playing quite a bit and you know like we've got a good good thing going on and lots of momentum and everyone's up for it and we've got time to think about it and write tunes and that's quite a valuable thing really isn't it I guess. yeah it's cool to be able to just like spend loads of time jamming and just yeah. having a wicked time with everyone but like throwing ideas around yeah, gigs are also a fun way to just sort of it's basically like a night out isn't it mm. it's exactly the same if you ask anyone who isn't in a band how they're missing like going on like a mad fucked up night out that probably isn't allowed yet yeah it's like that yeah exactly you, you know you it's nice having a few beers at home, mm. crying into yeah, your seat. It's nice to get like a group of people together and have a good old fashioned knees up. A big fucking and then then a, a heavy knees session, knees isn't it? Yeah, man. A few sessions. Well, that's it now. Have you got anything lined up for like, if like all this blows over and all that? We've got gigs that keep getting pushed back, haven't we? Yeah, we've just got new tunes and a new great outlook on life. Yeah, I guess basically, while, while the gigs are a bit like no one knows what's happening, we're just focusing on writing wicked tunes and just jamming and having a great time and sort of preparing for when there is a gig and when there's a gig we'll go out there and rip shit up yeah, man. take it down she'll be pretty great so there you go we haven't got anything, we haven't got anything specific lined up other than obviously the, the new single coming out on the 30th of October close to free which I'd say is probably going to be the crispest song we've it's ever done it's crispy and delicious when you sent that SoundCloud link earlier um, I listened to it via SoundCloud just to be a guy that did that and it sounded even more crisp and delicious. Yeah, no, actually. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what When it it's like there and you've got like the, the, the artwork and that. Yeah, yeah. Kind of you go, oh shit, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like the weird sound file that you pass in between people. Exactly, it became a bit more real. It suddenly solidifies itself oh. like a foul Blot mess. of fatty nugs at the bottom of your frying pan. <laughs> exactly, yeah, there you go. Yeah, man. Now I'm going to play a song by the VCR. I haven't played this song in a while and it's called Castaway. <laughs> Let in the 
now and this is a question I usually ask and have you got any recommended indie bands local artists singer songwriters and so on nah man they're all shit <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't most of them are shit sorry guys you all okay for drinks sorry can I get yeah. anything else or yeah yeah so uh, nah they're all shit really aren't they um, cigarette social club are cool yeah. estate are wicked yeah man um, Sean Gamble, Walsh and the Plagiarists are fucking FG fire. W A T P of fucking rocket. Yeah, yeah, man, they're great. Apart from them, cool dudes. They're, they're everyone just if, basically, if you need us to tell you about them, then actually, that doesn't logic doesn't really play, does it? Because no one, no one's heard of us either. Shit. Everyone's heard of us, something. Fuck. Everybody. Heard a new tune today by a band called Candid from Coventry, who are getting a pretty. Fucking good, for a, good sucking. a good sucking man from all angles, <laughs> and it was all right. It was just really fucking polished and clean, and just like a sort of boring end to end, really well done song. I think a polished recording does go a long way because people tend to, to be, be a bit more interested. They've got that sound. They're like a sort of indie band, but it's like everything's been put through like a fucking steriliser, uh, and it's come out beautiful. <laughs> but I don't know. They're just missing a bit. Candid. Of, I have to have listened. It's not very real. But they're cool, man. They're cool and they're smashing it. So fair play to them. Fair play to everyone, really. Like any speaking Birmingham of Coventry or... as well, um, the uh, the guy, the singer from the Enemy, from Coventry, he's um, supporting Ocean Colour Scene. Apparently, I've just went off doing his solo, yeah, solo shit. Yeah. Well, well, he's a fucking he's a great dude, in my opinion. Right, dude. Yeah, but basically, the real reason we're not recommending anyone is because we don't know that much about the local scene. Like, we, we know bands we gig with, we think they're cool, and we yeah. can get on with them. We like their tunes. Then we'll kind of like Estate and um, Cigarette Social Club. They were cool. Yeah, they were pretty cool. Right? I think because like they were just mint dudes as well, mainly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a main thing, like. Mm. And that's it, really. That's all that matters. If everyone's just out there playing gigs and having a wicked time, then we basically think they're cool. I hear that Holly and the Hot Rods are uh, back on the gigging scene as well. <laughs> Uh, I'm really glad, man. I'm, I'm yeah, glad they're really good. Oh, Holly and the Su- Sutton Coalfield based um, wedding and function band, Holly and the Hot Rods, <laughs> are fucking killing it, apparently. They're really good. Yeah. 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 Holly and the Hot Rods. Rods. Yeah, I think they are, yeah, yeah. But they do, uh, at the moment, they're doing sort of socially distanced back, back garden gigs. But, um, but yeah, yeah. All good. Beautiful, yeah. Well, there you go. Holly and the Hot Rods. You, you, you've heard it here first and last. <laughs> also, is there anything I missed? in the podcast you'll like to add nah not really man it's been it's a very thorough it's been pretty fucking thorough <laughs> inspection man I feel, I feel violated <laughs> nice one um, in a good way like. I guess like yeah just fucking keep going on about the new single coming out and yeah. that being a thing yeah. it is actually a cool tune as well just we're not just looking, saying it very much forward to seeing what people think about the new tune or new tunes and Obviously, you're playing gigs and all that bullshit. Just very excited to just get back out and get back on it. Yeah, and it, man. I just want to start playing fucking tunes again. Yeah. Like, I just. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to be back in there. Back in there. Back in there, smashing it. Oh. Smashing heads. Mm. And combing dreads. 
That thing you don't do. <laughs> coming in dripped. <laughs> coming, coming in dripped. That, that, that could be horrible. <laughs> I wouldn't want to clean a coming dread. <laughs> Before we go, have you got anything inspiring you can say to the listeners? Nah. No, we haven't. It's all shit. Just, just wait for a bit. Maybe ignore the rules. Have fun. <laughs> ignore everything. Ignore <laughs> everything anyone tells you to do. Ignore all advice. Go out there and then just go to gigs, even if they're not on. Just go to them anyway and just. No, nah, fuck it. No, we haven't got anything my, um, to my, my, my inspiring thing would be in the, to quote Richard Richard from Bottom. If you want to have a good time, forget it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. If you want to have a good time, forget it. so much to the members of the vcr for um doing the podcast for me really appreciate it and thank you for taking up your time and um, to do it as well like it was certainly a great podcast another in my opinion another great rock and roll podcast in a way it's just like like it's probably my second favorite i don't know like one of my top favourite podcasts like because um I just love how honest you guys are and that with your answers and that and I def- I respect a band that's like that more than a band that kind of fakes their opinions and stuff like that. Like you get a lot of that bands that try to impress people more than be themselves. Whereas I you know, I hope you all can understand what I'm on about, but another great podcast and just a brilliant one. Also, if you really enjoyed today's podcast, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're VCR fans and right, I only just came on to um, listen to this video or listen to this podcast, um, please check out my other podcasts. I've got other podcasts with likes of... Um, Sean Gamble Walsh and the Plagiarists and um, Cherry Pickles and Jaws and uh, Meg Short and soon I'm going to have a podcast upcoming with Bryony Williams and Jack Card. So yeah, lots coming up and yeah, that's all i got to say. Stay tuned for the next podcast everyone. That should be out very soon and have a nice weekend. Good night and take care. I can see.